what I'm trying to do, Sean, with this series of devotions is they're not designed to get people into the Word of God. They're designed to get the Word of God into the people. And if we get the Word of God into our lives, it makes a tremendous difference. It's time for another episode of The Sean Tappet Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is O.S. Hawkins, and we're going to be discussing his new book, The Passion Code, 100 Days with Jesus. O.S., welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Sean. It's great to be with you. Well, let's kick off our conversation today with a bit of what we might call the O.S. Hawkins origin story. So for the listeners who are encountering you for the very first time in our talk today, what are a few things they need to know about you? Oh, goodness. Uh, that, not very much. I can <laughs> think of it's worth knowing. But, uh, you know, I, was, uh, I grew up over in Fort Worth, Texas. And when I was 17, I could count on one hand how many times I'd ever been in a church and I'd never heard a prayer in my home or seen the Bible opened, and a young man witnessed to me of Christ after a basketball game, and make a long story short, I came to know him. My life was radically transformed, and went to TCU. I was a pre-law student there, and taking the LSATs to go to law school when I felt God calling me into ministry. So my wife Susie and I have been, been in ministry for decades. We pastored for 15 years down at First Baptist Fort Lauderdale, and then uh, in the early 90s, I came to be pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas. And now for the last 22 years, I've been president and CEO of Guidestone, which serves 250,000 pastors and missionaries and folks like that with their financial needs. Thanks for giving us a little bit of context for who you are and a little bit about your background. That's always helpful. Next, let's talk briefly about the Codebook series. I work in the publishing industry, so I'm always intrigued by books that have a long tail and a long life. And this series has sold more than 1 million copies to date. And so I'm curious to hear, you know, from your perspective as the author, why do you think these books have resonated so strongly with the readers? Sean, first of all, Thomas Nelson publishes them and they're beautiful leather-like gift editions. So there are a lot of them are given as gifts, but we're so blessed that the code series has been out about four or five years now. And Actually, now the sales are between a million and a half and two million. That's amazing. And I think the reason they've taken off, you know, the secret's kind of in the subtitle. The first one was called the Joshua Code. It really comes from Joshua 1.8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night to do all that's written therein. So it dawned on me that a lot of people want to get into the Bible, but they don't know how. They start over in Genesis and if they get it to Leviticus, they get bogged down there. And if they start in the New Testament, they are immediately in Matthew 1, confronted with 48 names they can't pronounce. And so it dawned on me that there were 52 verses in the Bible, one for every week of the year, that every believer ought to know. And if you knew those 52 verses, you would know the overarching theme and message of the Bible. And so that was the Joshua Code, 52 scripture verses every believer should know, designed to have the readers memorize one verse a week for a year. Churches took their people through it. There was devotional thoughts, applications in it. And so it just took off, Sean. It sold several hundred thousand copies. And after that, I had no intention of starting a series of code devotionals, but I was reading the Gospels, and I was overwhelmed by how many times I, Jesus asked questions. Now, I'd seen that hundreds of times, but never thought about it, but he was always asking questions. I counted them, there are like 150 questions just in the Gospels that escaped the lips of our Lord. He was omniscient. He has all knowledge. He didn't need answers. It was his way of communicating. So it dawned on me that there were 52 Scripture questions in the Bible that every believer ought to answer before they get to heaven. And so that was the Jesus Code, 52 Scripture questions every believer should answer, like Job's, if a man dies, will he live again? And all these Scripture questions. So one link led to another, and now there are eight or nine of them in the series. The best-selling one, actually, is The Christmas Code. It's in itself has sold over half a million copies and Advent devotion. So this last one is The Passion Code, 100 Days with Jesus. So just trying to get folks to spend 100 days with Christ and develop a passion to know Him. 
Well, and I think definitely the code word in the title uh, lends an intrigue factor to somebody potentially picking this up. And you had commented a little bit about the leather-like gift book format. And honestly, if you see one of these books sitting on a shelf in a store, you can't help but pick one up and take a look because they've done such a phenomenal job with the packaging. You want to see what it's all about. Right. And you know, what I'm trying to do, Sean, with this series of devotions is they're not designed to get people into the Word of God. They're designed to get the Word of God into the people. And if we get the Word of God into our lives, it makes a tremendous difference. And let me just say also, while we're talking about how many of them are sold, uh, the reason I talk about that is because all the royalties and proceeds, every dime of my royalties, go to Mission Dignity, uh, which is a ministry we have here at Guidestone that supports retired pastors and their widows in their declining years that are living down there at the poverty level. That's a good additional piece of information. Thank you for sharing that. I always like to hear a little bit about the story behind the book. So in terms of the passion code, was there a particular need that you saw or a catalyst that got you moving down the direction of writing this? How did this particular devotional journey get started for you? You know, it was a Christmas season, a couple of Christmases ago, and it just dawned on me that the only time we really talk about the incarnation, call his name Emmanuel, God with us, and emphasize the incarnation is just for a couple of weeks in December, but it is a 52-week reality that we need to always remember and keep to the forefront. So the Passion Coach really divided into three sections, 100 days all together. It's got a devotional thoughts. It's got a code word every day to live by. It's got a scripture verse, and it's got a prayer in there. So it's something every day. You know, it's not the volume of material we read every morning. It's whether we really put it into practice. So the Passion Code, you can read that daily devotion in five to 10 minutes in the morning, but yet it gives you something. So my point is I'd rather my readers do one of these devotionals than hear or read a hundred of them. So it's designed to put it into action in our lives. So it's divided into three sections. God with us, first of all. God came and clothed himself in human flesh. He walked among us, Sean and You know, the reality of that is he could have come a grown man and gone to the cross and died for our sin, but he became as helpless as a tiny seed planted in the womb of a young virgin girl, then was born in the dung and filth of a stable where disease with death was likely possibilities. And he grew in wisdom and stature through all the stages of life. He came to be with us so he could say to every one of your listeners today, I understand. Maybe a kid's listening. thinking, man, that preacher's boring. I don't want to go to church. Jesus can say, hey, I understand. You should have heard the rabbi at Nazareth. They're teenagers. Nobody understands a teenager. Jesus said, look, I do. I was a teenager one time. Somebody's tempted to sin. Somebody listening to us right now is tempted to be unfaithful, perhaps to their wife or their husband, or tempted to sin. Jesus can say, hey, look, I understand. I was tempted at all points like you, yet without sin. Somebody's afraid to die. He can say, look, I understand. I went to Gethsemane and said, Lord, if it's possible, let this pass from me. So he came to be with us so he could identify with us. In the second section, God for us. You know, the Bible says in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. His was a vicarious death. He took my sin so I could take his righteousness. He died by death so I could live his life. But he could have never come to live to die for us and had he not first come to be with us. And then the third section, God with us, God for us, and God in us. The dynamic power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. What Paul talked about in Colossians 1, Christ in me, the hope of glory. You know, when Paul took the gospel to the Ephesians, some of them had been saved there. And when he got there, he began to talk to them about the Holy Spirit in Acts 19 too. They said, well, wait a minute. We've not even so much as heard there is a Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit, Christ himself and the Spirit comes to live in us, to never leave us. It's the secret to the Christian life. And so that's the third section, how we can know the fullness of God's Spirit in us to empower us never to leave us. A little bit ago, you mentioned Jesus' incarnation. Let's move now to the other side of Jesus' life story where we have his death, which was the ultimate act of passion. For believers, what's an appropriate way for us to respond to Jesus' passion, and how should it motivate us in our daily walk with him? So in the one sense, we're keeping the incarnation in front of us, 
But how should we also be keeping Jesus' passion in front of us as well? Well, you know, Romans 5, 8 says, God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the message of the gospel. And, you know, all of our lives, we have grown up around the church, have heard Jesus died for our sin, but some of us have never come to the reality of what that means, that his death was not just voluntary. He didn't just lay down his life. It was vicarious. He died in our place. He suffered the shame and the hurt and the humiliation and the pain and the agony and ultimately the separation and the death that we deserve. You know, the Bible says, you know, we used to tell these good news, bad news jokes. And Paul in Romans said this. He said, the wages of sin is death. That's a bad news. But the good news is the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So God for us, coming to be for us is so very vitally important. And that's why Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. When you think of a reader, say, getting to that last page, the end of day 100 of this journey of the Passion Code, what do you hope every single reader has heard loud and clear has taken away from their journey with this book? Well, you know, Sean, that word passion, we use it a lot. It means an intense desire. We throw it around a lot. In fact, I heard somebody just the other day said, man, that guy has a passion for golf. Or we say she has a passion for music or education or something. None of us ought to have a passion who are believers that exceeds our passion to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, the fullness of his spirit. So when they complete this 100-day journey with Jesus, my desire is that each of us but have a passion for Christ that exceeded any earthly passion that we might have. Well, and I know one question people often have in terms of devotional works, and you alluded to this a bit earlier, but I just want to reiterate that one more time here at the end of the interview. In terms of a daily commitment, how much time will it take the average reader to work through one day's worth of reading in the Passion Code? No more than 10 minutes, maybe six to eight minutes. Again, Sean, it's not the volume of Scripture. You know, I know people that feel guilty if they don't read five or ten chapters every morning. We can't assimilate all that knowledge in one time. So what I've tried to do is just take this where somebody can take it in the morning. Then there's that code word that you write down, keep in your pocket, that reminds you of something in that passage. If you've got just a second, I'll illustrate what I'm talking about. Please do with that code word. For example, take one of those devotionals in the first section on the incarnation is about the nativity. And you know, Sean, I've got, like most of us, a smartphone. I've got that new iPhone 11 right now. The most incredible feature on it is the camera. And there's a portion of that camera where you can crop pictures down. For example, my wife Susie and I have two daughters, Wendy and Holly, two great son-in-laws and six grandchildren. Well, We took a picture the other day with Susie and I in the middle, the grandchildren flanking us, and their parents on either end. To be honest with you, my grandkids and I have a common enemy, and that's their parents. And so I took that picture off my phone, and I just cropped down where I cropped those parents out. And I got a beautiful picture of my wife and I and the grandkids. Well, you know, we can do that with the nativity. When you look at the nativity, the first thing you see is the big picture. It's a worship service. The whole place is exploding with worship. Angels are hovering like drones, worshiping. The shepherds have come from the fields, and they come to worship him. They're bowing down. And later, the wise men came, and they're bringing gifts and bowing down. The whole place is exploding with worship. But if you crop that down, in the middle, you find a family, Mary and Joseph and the Lord Jesus. Because Christmas is about family. God is really pro-family. And God took and trusted his only son with a human family. Christmas is about family. But if you crop it again and get it right down to the center, there's just the Lord Jesus. And Christmas is really just about Jesus. So that's one of the devotions. And the code word that day is crop. Every time you think about that or see a picture on your iPhone or you're cropping it or you look at it or something, let it be a reminder to you that the incarnation is not just about worship and not just about a family but it's only about Jesus Christ primarily. So there's a code word in there every day, 
that you can write down, keep in your pocket. Maybe one day it's door or one reason or something. So that you're reminded during the day of that devotional. And then there's a scripture verse to apply to your life that day and a little prayer. So in answer to your question, six or eight minutes, and you've got a devotional that you can put into practice. Having looked over the book in preparation for the interview, I will vouch for that uh, you can easily do this in you know six to eight minutes or so. I like that the books in the series are small in format, easy to take with you. They'll fit in a purse. They'll fit in a laptop bag. So wherever you need to go, this book is portable and can come with you. OS, in terms of people who want to connect with you, find out more about your ministry, find out more about the books in this series, where are some of the places we can find you online? I would suggest you just go to oshawkins.com. That's O-S-H-A-W-K-I-N-S.com. You can find out all the information there about the Passion Code. There are also, Sean, there are hundreds of free resources for leadership and devotion and things like that that are on that website, videos and there must be 15 or 20 of my previous books that are free downloads on there. There are staff meetings on there. There are motivational messages. There are all kinds of stuff on there. It's all free. But the code series is not because it supports mission dignity, and it'll show you where to get them there at oshawkins.com. And if I can just briefly say, you know, we're on a mission here to bring dignity to these forgotten folks, and that's pastors and their widows. They pastored all their life, most of them in a little crossroads out there somewhere seemingly forgotten place, but we're so faithful, never made enough money to live on, much less retire on. And most of them lived in a church-owned home. When they vocationally retired, they had to get out of that. They had nothing. And so 10 years ago, we were able to raise enough money to help them with $50 a month. Now the neediest among them get $600 a month. And one little pastor's widow, 87 years old, wrote me recently, and she said, I get to eat at night now. It's not just a piece of toast. So it's good to know that every time you purchase one of these, the royalties of it go to support one of those precious people in need like that. That's so good to know. I'm glad you shared that. And it just helps give us some context, I think, for some of the reasons God has blown on this series and giving it a raging success, as you might say, because on the other side, it's supporting men and women who have served faithfully their entire lives. That's wonderful. Thank you right. for sharing and, you that. Right. And I truly believe that, Sean. I believe it's a, there's a supernatural principle there that God has blessed it. And you know what? To be honest with you, I would like to think that now, five years later, after starting this, if I'd have known they had sold two million copies, I <laughs> I would like to think I'd been as benevolent as I was, but I would have been. And that's one of the reasons God has blessed it. And truth of the matter is, once you buy one of them, you get the others. They sell themselves because you want to get into these devotions. And once you see them and read them, people are buying them and giving them for gifts. They're so beautifully done. Well, and like we do with every episode, we'll have detailed links in the show notes, places where you can connect with OS to find out more, and places where you can pick up your own copy of the books in this series as well. It's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with OS Hawkins. Once again, our book today was The Passion Code, 100 Days with Jesus. For more on OS Hawkins in the book, a great place to start is his website. You can find that over at oshawkins.com. And OS, I just want to say thanks so much for sharing with us today. It's been an honor to have you on the show. Well, thank you, Sean. I really appreciate the opportunity.